lifesaver. Oh, okay, this is that. I like this one, so I'm gonna go with this one because mm -hmm. I'm used to it. Kinda. Glad you asked that out. So Hello. You, Hi, and welcome to Sanctuary. We are just so happy you're here. I want to ask you something. I remember when I was in junior high school, my mom was in the middle of a divorce, and I can remember her always saying, I'm so disgusted. I don't know what in the world to do. And as I got older, I looked at that, and I wonder today, what do you do when you've done everything that you know to do and everything goes wrong? That's what happened in the Bible. That's what happened in the Bible and that's what we're going to focus on today. I'm going to give you an example of what happened in the Bible when somebody did everything they knew to do and it all went wrong. And had they had a huge disappointment. And I'm going to tell you what God's answer is for that. So when you have a huge disappointment like they had in the Bible, what is God's answer to that? Let's look at Exodus chapter 5. In Exodus chapter 5, just to give you a background, Exodus chapter 3 starts with Moses. Moses has a miraculous calling from God. He knows that he's called by God. The, the bush is burning. God says to Moses, I have a work for you to do. I want you to go back to Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Now remember, this is about what do you do when you've done everything you know to do and everything goes wrong. And what does God say about that? In Exodus chapter 5, this is what happens to Moses, but I'm giving you a backdrop first. So Moses respectfully tells God, you got the wrong guy. I cannot go back to Egypt and tell people and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. So I'll just, um, I don't know what to tell you, but I think I'm the wrong one. And so then he says, God says to Moses, after some talking, God tells Moses, look what I've given you. Look in your hand. Everything you need to do what I've called you to do, you have. So we're going to use what I've given you to get what we want. And everything you need is in your mouth. I'm the God that made a mouth. Who made the mouth? It was me. Who made your hands? It was me. So God told Moses, you can do what I'm asking you to do. And Moses, even though, yes, he was raised he was born a Hebrew. He was raised an Egyptian. So he doesn't have a scriptural base for his life. And now God is calling him to do something. And he has finally agreed that he's going to do it. Pharaoh, he said, God told Pharaoh, God told Moses, I will tell you what to do. I will put the words in your mouth and I will give you Aaron to help you. So Aaron and Moses go in chapter 3, and at the end of chapter 4, Aaron and Moses tell the children of Israel, okay, God is going to deliver you. Aaron and Moses show signs and wonders that God has shown them, God has given them, and the children of Israel, the end of chapter 4, believe that God is going to finally deliver them after 400 years of slavery. Remember this parallel so much as I was reading with the 400 years of slavery for, for our people because it was approximately 450 years before the Emancipation Proclamation. Now here we go about 450 years for the, uh, for the Hebrews to be emancipated from, from Pharaoh, sidebar. But the people now believe God and now here's the, here's the story. Here comes the disappointment. Moses is doing everything he knows to do and something is going to go totally the bottom is going to drop out. Dear God, in the name of Jesus, let your power show us what we do when the bottom falls out of our life, what we do when we're so disappointed and what you have to say to us. In Jesus name, amen. So 
Exodus chapter 5, Moses and Aaron go to 5-1. Moses and Aaron go to the go to Pharaoh and say, Lord God of Israel told me to tell you to let my people go so that they can hold a feast in the wilderness. And Pharaoh says, who is the Lord that I'm going to obey him? Not only am I not going to free the slaves, which you say God told you to tell me to do, I am now going to make their life even harder. And so Pharaoh's answer in, in Exodus 5, 2, he says, all this, you had straw before you had to get straw. My, my people, my taskmasters, they gave the straw to you. And now I am going to have you to get your own straw. Get your own straw. Pharaoh's saying, you're lazy. That's why you want to go and, and worship God in the wilderness. No, you will not get to worship God in the wilderness and now make it even harder for you. So imagine how Moses feels. Not only he did everything he knew to do, but the bottom dropped. Now the people that he's trying to save for the second time are not only not saved, but they're in a worse place. Imagine how he must have felt, how disappointed he was. What he expected was for Pharaoh to say, yes, I'll let my people go. But then Moses and Aaron said a second time, God of Hebrews, the God of the Hebrews sent me to tell you, let my people go so they can worship as they need to in the wilderness. But instead of that, now Hebrews, now Pharaoh has commanded the Hebrews slaves, you will the same day Pharaoh turned around, instead of freeing the children, he tightened their chains. Don't give the slaves any more straw to make bricks from. Now, from now on, let the Hebrews go and get straws themselves that they will make the same amount of bricks as they had to make before. So the Hebrew slaves now had, he says, too much free time. That's why they were going, that's why they want to worship their God. And no matter how much the slaves pleaded with the taskmasters, the taskmaster said, go and get straw yourself and your work will not be lessened. You still have to make the same amount of bricks as you did before. So the Hebrew slaves all went all over Egypt to get stubble. And the taskmasters beat them fiercely because they could never meet the quota of doing more and still having the same amount required of them. Pharaoh spoke death to them. He spoke lies. He spoke lies uh, and death to the people of God, to their mind and body and spirit. He called God's people lazy and he beat them down. But first of all, I want you to know that this is a huge disappointment. God is saying this huge disappointment is more than meets the eye. Now Pharaoh is making things even harder for the people. And at the end of verse five, the people see the people see Moses and they say at the end of verse six, I'm sorry, they stand in Moses' way and they say, you have made life worse for us. Now we stink to Pharaoh and he's beating us and things are worse than they've ever been. Can you imagine how Moses felt? The disappointment he felt when he did everything he knew to do. God told him what to do and he did it. And now the bottom has fallen out. All hell is breaking loose. The words God is saying now, I need you to look at this from the spirit and see this huge disappointment is more than what meets the eye. 
my words are spirit. And this is not just a man named Pharaoh. He is the king of this world. He represents the God of this world. He represents the enemy that I told you about in John 10.10, 10, where the enemy comes to, as a thief, to lie, steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you would have life, and that life more abundantly. The disappointment that you feel, God is saying, you will always feel when you are subject to the God of this world. You will always feel when you deal with the flesh of this world. And as I told you, Pharaoh will not be easy to let you go. It takes a hold on you and he does not easily let go. So sidebar, this is why as young adults, God says, don't give occasion for the flesh. Don't play around with Pharaoh because some people play around with like drinking, pornography, lying, etc. They spend their whole life in a battle for deliverance. The Pharaoh of the flesh will not let go just like that. And they spend their life trying to get the taste of these things out of their mouth. So in in Exodus chapter 6, verse 1, now God is answering what you do when you're so disappointed, when you've done everything, when you married the person you thought you should marry, and here you are with the divorce. When you are walking down the street and someone comes and arrests you, when you're asleep and someone kills a relative of yours, what do you do when you're so disappointed? What's my answer? His answer is in Exodus chapter 6, verse 1. Here is the answer. 6, 1. Then the Lord said to, the, to Moses, I will, you will see what I will do to Pharaoh. This is the winter I told you about in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. This is the season of the winter. But don't throw your confidence away during the season of suffering. Verse 2, I am the Lord Almighty, the ruler over everything and everyone, including this enemy who does not want to let you go. I told you that he would not let you go easily. But... Now, you knew me in verse 2 as the God of your grandparents. But now I'm going to show you who I am personally. And he says in 6.1, I will, you will see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go. And with a strong hand drive them out of the land. He's saying there's a hand bigger than your hand that's ruling everything you do. You are not alone. You are in this with me and I'm in this with you. And so I have a plan for you and I will deliver you. I want you to notice what God is saying when you have so many disappointments. Look in chapter 6 and if you can see all this that I've highlighted, you'll see that God has all these I want you to see all these I wills. He's saying, I will, I will do this. I am the Lord God. And I appeared unto Abraham. Yes, you knew me as your grandfather's God and your father's God. But now I'm going to show you that I'm Jehovah. I'm going to show you that I am your father. I am the God who is Jehovah Nisi. I am Jehovah Sikanu. I will be a God to you that will provide a way out. And I will establish my covenant. I will do everything I said I would do. Hold on to my promises. 
Look at all these I wills that he starts with now. I am the God. I am the God who I said I was. I am the God, Jehovah. I will do what I promised you that I would do. Notice God answers all these I wills now. Hold on to what I'm telling you. Believe in this dark. What I told you in the light of the burning bush that I spoke to you in. Believe now what I told you then. Hold on to my promises. And he says in verse 6, I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will bring you out. I will do this. I will bring you out. I am not a God that I should lie and I will do what I said I would do. And then he says, and I will rid you of their bondages. Remember, this is a type of the enemy. The bondages that we have because we are connected to Pharaoh. He's saying, not only will I bring you out, as he said, I will bring you out from the first part of the verse, from under the burdens, I will rid you of the burdens. I will clear every thought, every remembrance of this hard time, of this disappointment. I will wipe it from your mind. I will do greater things than you've ever seen. I will have you to leave the things in the past because I will have so much greater for you in the future. I need you to know you can trust me because I am God. He says to your disappointment, I am God. I will be to you. Now, he says, I will take you to me for a people. You are mine. You are mine. I created you to be mine. I need you to say that during the disappointment. I am God's and I will, here he is again, I will take you to me. I will be to you a God. I will be to you a deliverer. And ye shall know that I am the Lord, your God, that brings you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. That's an awesome thing for us, to bring us out of the burdens of the Egyptians in our life. Whether the Egyptians are racism, or the Egyptians, I will bring you out from the bondage of Pharaoh, whether it's racism, whether it's discrimination, whether it's sickness, whether it's just anything, any bondage that you have, I will bring you out. He's saying, hold on to my promises. I am not leaving you. I will indeed give it to you for an inheritance. I will give you everything I promised. It's not over. I will defeat Pharaoh. It will be a battle, but I am, he says, I am the Lord. I am the great one. You are serving the almighty, all-powerful God. And no matter what it looks like, I need you not to get rid of your confidence. I need you not to minimize that this is a battle of the spirit, not just of the flesh. This is a battle of the spirit and I'm battling for the souls of my people. And that's why it's not just a casual, yes, I'll let your people go. No, because Pharaoh wanted, his thought was everything that connects with the flesh. He wanted just money. He just saw money. He didn't want to let go of the people because all he wanted was what they could bring. I will deliver you from the people that want to just use you. And we know how that feels to be in a relationship where you just get used. I will deliver you from that. I have more for you, he says. And the Lord says, I will be your God and you will know me as a deliverer. Remember what he's saying to you. And he says in chapter six, I will be your God and you will be released. And at the end, he now says, all of my people and Moses spoken to the children of Israel and they hearkened. And he says, 
And the Lord spoke unto Moses and unto Aaron and gave them charge over the children of Israel. And then he ends by saying, the heads of the houses of Reuben, the heads of the houses of Sim Simeon, the heads of the houses of Levi. What he's saying is, all my people who trust in my promises are coming out. I don't care what bondage you have. You might come out limping because you have to go through rehab because of a deliverance you had to have. You might have to go through coming out limping because of divorce, because you had to leave abuse. You might come out crying because of depression, but God is saying, you're coming out of this. Anything that's been holding you up, you're coming out of it. And I need you to trust me and believe everything I say. The word today is that when something happens, and it will, and all the, and all the disappointments happen, even though you've done all that you can do, God is saying all the I wills to you. And he's saying, I will take you out of this bondage. I will bring you to myself. I am the God who delivers you. Remember the promises of God. And that's what I'm here to tell you today. We will as a people come out of our bondage. We will as individuals come out of our bondage. We will as a body of believers come out of our bondage because our God is faithful. And in this deliverance, we'll see him not just as a God that is way up there, but as Abba, Father, as the one who hears us and loves us and comforts us. Remember who you are. Don't believe the lies of Pharaoh. Stand on the truth of my word. And every one of my people who stand on my word are coming out. Remember, you know what happened with this deliverance and how God showed himself so mighty here. You know this story. But well, what's your story? What deliverance is God going to bring you out of? And are you going to stand faithful through your disappointments and trust God, even through the disappointments, the things that we can't control, but yet God can control. We can control our mind. And we can control thinking and believing and trusting the promises of God. So, believers, saints, friends, when something happens and you're so disappointed and you've done all that you know to do, remember, don't throw out your confidence. Keep your eyes on the prize. Remember in the dark what God told you in your light. He said, I will, I will, I will, I will. I will, I will, I will. These are your promises. I will bring you out. I will rid you of your bondages. I will bring you back to where you were and even stronger with my strong hand. I will take you from where you are. That speaks of deliverance. I am the God of power. I will be with you. You are not alone. I am the Lord all powerful and I will bring you to me and to a land that I promised you. All those promises that I gave you, hold on to them. I will do everything I promised I would do. The promise that I gave you, you hold on to it right now because I'm going to do that. Remember who you are. Remember you're a child of the Most High and remember that he is faithful. I will. I will. I will. And we already know that he did deliver. And I am a witness that he will deliver you because he did deliver me. And deliverance, remember, is over time and not overnight God's word is true if you want deliverance from the Pharaoh that has you trust God in his word stand on that word no matter what it looks like feed your faith 
and know that the, your Redeemer lives. Well, I love you. We love you at Sanctuary. Wanted you to know it's a very disappointing times and during these times, hold on to God's promises. Continue to come to the Bible studies, to the words of God on Sunday and to our periodic words throughout the week. We love you. Stay tuned. And God bless. You can click in to give um, to give online. You can go to our website, sanctuarybaptist.com, and we have easy steps of how to give. You can go to our website and ask for prayer, and we thank you for your support. God bless.